In photography, I find myself in multiple different stages of the process. One of the most important stages for me is the editing. I dare to claim that a lot of my photography relies to 50% on the editing. Most of my photos would be absolutely boring if there wasn't Lightroom. One might call some of the stuff I do cheating, but I don't see it that way. Everyone has their own philosophy when it comes to this subject. I view my photography a bit like a painting. It's my way of painting, because I can't paint. And therefore, I think that whatever extent of editing and manipulation goes into a photo, it's alright for me because it's part of the art. What comes hereby is that editing becomes a rather personal matter. It's the last touches you give your photo to make it yours, which will give it your style. Therefore, naturally, the raw photo is all the more personal. It's the unfinished product, the naked photo. And it really has a similarity to nudity in the way that we don't just want to expose it that easily. I know, I know, that's a little far-fetched, but the point I'm trying to make is that I'm thankful to every one of you who sent me a few of their raw photos last week for me to edit. It's an honor for me to receive these and to give them my edit, and before we get into the edits, I feel obligated to make it clear that these are my personal preferences, the way I would edit the photo, which however by no means is the correct way. As said, it's an individual matter, and this video is only for some interesting comparisons. With that said, let's get to the photos. I chose 10 pictures in total, each one from a different person. Let's begin with this photo here by Wolf Lass. I'll always have the Instagram tag of the photographer on the screen when announcing the photo, so if you see something you like, you might as well check the original creator. Wolf Lass sent me this photo here of these trees covered in fog, and you people know how much I love these kind of images, so I just had to choose this one. So the first thing I edited was the aspect ratio. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have noticed that I'm quite fond of a really wide screen aspect ratio. I cropped this image to a 2x1 ratio. Next, I normalized the image a little by brutally dehazing it and shifting the white balance towards the blue side to give this image a nice cool tone. Apart from many minor changes which you can see in the screen recording, I added some gradient filters to enhance the fog around the center, but keeping the center itself quite clear. I also strongly desaturated the blue color to make this image a little more natural again, and pulled down the luminance of the blues for some more contrast. Additionally, I heel stamped away the birds from the photo to keep it a little simpler, but also because the birds looked a little like dust on the sensor. That's more or less all I did, and that results in this image here. Thank you Wolflas for the entry. Let's continue with this portrait here. This one is by Aperature Jim. Jim, I suppose, is your name. He sent me this nice headshot of this guy in the harsh contrasty light, I believe maybe just before golden hour, or maybe just as it was starting. Anyway, I first went ahead and cropped it to a 4x5 aspect ratio, which is the biggest vertical aspect ratio Instagram allows. Additionally, I cropped a little further to the left to center the model's face. Again, I'll only be going over the main adjustments of the edit, not every little detail. An important adjustment here was the shift of the white balance. I pushed this image into a much warmer look to enhance the golden hour feeling. I also pulled down the clarity a bit to soften this rather harsh image. I reduced the contrast in the photo with the basic adjustments by shifting the whites, highlights and shadows. Next, I reintroduced some contrast to the image in the curves, to regain the nice contrast the sunlight gave this photo, but a little more controlled and softer. I tried to keep the contrast soft by lifting the blacks a little in the curves to give the image this light fade in the shadows. I also enhanced the warm tone by adding oranges in both the highlights and the shadows in split toning. To give the viewer's eye a little extra direction, I added some graduated filters to darken a few areas such as the right and the bottom of the photo. Lastly, I added some grain, just for the mood. With these adjustments done, I ended up with this edit here. Thank you Jim for your entry. Next, let's continue with another portrait, this one is by Sebastian. This portrait was definitely shot at golden hour, but the white balance kinda contoured the orange tones of the photo, so I corrected that to give the image the warm golden hour look. I shifted blue towards teal in the calibration tab to get this orange and teal look, but then I erased the blues in the HSL tab. I added some green into the shadows with the red channel in the curves. I also added some extra brightness to the model with the brush, and I added two gradient filters to create a slight bright to dark gradient from left to right. Lastly, I went over the model's arms with the brush and gave them a light color correction because somehow her skin tones in her face looked different to her arms. And that's it. I ended up with an overall very warm and orange photo. Well, I like it. Thank you Sebastian for the entry. Next up, I have yet another portrait. This one is by 
German Haguida? I'm so not sure if that was pronounced correctly. Probably was totally wrong, so please correct me in the comments if I messed that up. I'm really sorry. Uh, let's get to the edit. This edit was a hard one. I had envisioned to give this edit a warm, purplish blue hour look, but I tried and it wasn't working out at all. I shifted the white balance towards the warm tones. I did my standard contrast procedure from the basic adjustments to the curves, and I did quite a lot of color editing. Basically, I desaturated all colors except the skin tones to make the oranges the main color of the photo. I added a few gradient filters to darken the photo from different sides, and I also desaturated the edges. Lastly, I added some grain, and I ended up with absolutely not what I was planning to do. Instead of the blue hour vibe, this edit has a warm, moody, and somehow vintage look to it, and I'm quite happy with the end result. Thank you very much, German, for your entry. Next up, I edited this photo by Reg Does Stuff. He shot this beautiful vertical photo of the winter landscape with the river going through the middle. The first thing I did was the crop. I cropped it to a 4x5 aspect ratio, so again, suitable for Instagram. However, here I think the crop is also pretty important because of the negative space at the top, just to reduce that area. I didn't do too much with the white balance here, I found the cold look fitting for the scenery. I did my standard moves in the basic adjustments. Interesting here was the clarity slider. The scenery seemed slightly foggy to me, so I pulled down the clarity to soften the image a little, which gives the whole scene a nice look I find. As often done before, I added some contrast in the curves and lifted the blacks a little. Additionally, in the curves I went into the red channel again to add some greens into the shadows. In the HSL tab, I desaturated all colors except blue and aqua. I added some more blues to the image in both the highlights and the shadows in the split turning tab. Next it was time for my beloved gradient filters. I pulled up a dark filter from the bottom and another filter from the top down to the bottom with clarity and dehazing set to minus 70 or so to create this extra soft mist from the upper half of the photo. Lastly, I added some more darkness to the edges of the photo with more gradient filters. And that's it. This is what the end result looks like. Thank you Reg for your submission. Next up, I edited a product photo from Tarek Fordil. Again, I'm sorry if I got that wrong, please correct me in the comments if I did. He sent me this shot here of a watch. I began with my usual procedure in the basic adjustments. Remarkable here was that I used a lot of dehazing to give this photo some more clarity, which I also underlined at the curves with some more contrast, and here again I lifted the blacks slightly. I shifted the white balance towards the cold area, and the tint a little into green. Then I shifted the blues in the calibration, and the watch was looking pretty ugly now due to all the blue. Therefore, in the HSL tabs, I desaturated blue and the photo looked much better. I added a bunch of gradient filters from all directions to enhance the lighting. I was trying to get the photo to look a bit more like the light was coming from the upper left side. I added some final touches to the watch with the brush to brighten the dark parts and add some clarity. And lastly, I went over the colors a little more to get just the tones I was looking for. Here is the before and after. Thank you, Tarek, for sending in your photo. I continued my editing spree with this photo here from Amy Wong. This photo was looking slightly overexposed and hazy, so first I fixed that in the basic adjustments. As usual, I created a lot of my contrast in the curves, and additionally I added some gradients to darken a few areas of the photo. In the HSL tab, I edited the colors, especially the greens. I pulled down the luminance and the saturation a little of the greens to give the bush a slightly different color. With the brush, I added some clarity to the fish swimming in the pond. Then I heel stamped away that little sign at the top and a few spots in the water just to declutter the photo a little. And that's it, my edit on Amy's photo. Thanks Amy for your submission. Next up, I edited this photo of this guy on his bike shot by Daniel Candela. I liked the framing of the subject very much the way it was, so I didn't crop the image. This photo was calling for another warm or even hot edit, so I went for it. I pushed the white balance a little warmer, then as usual bringing back some details and adding contrast in the curves. Then I skipped down to the calibration tab to push the blue slider to the teal side again to get this orange and teal color contrast, but then in the HSL tab I strongly desaturated the blues to make that sky in the background less poppy. Do you know what I mean? Then to really embrace a warm look for this photo I added some orange tones in split turning. Next, I wanted to give the light a clearer direction in this photo, so I added a gradient filter from the upper left side, where I was guessing that the sun was about. 
I added some brightness and warmth to that filter to have this nice gradient from extra warm to neutral from left to right. To enhance that effect I added another gradient from the right, but this time with a little darkness and coldness. I went one more step to enhance the effect and brushed each half of the helmet to brighten the left side and darken the right side. And that was enough then, this is the final edit. Thank you very much Daniel for submitting your photo. Alright, we're on to the one before last photo, this one is by Luca. So this photo as you can see is a tall building but photographed from ground level. Therefore the perspective is not straight and so I tried to fix it in the transformation tab. And well, I did, kind of. I brutally distorted the photo to get the edges decently straight, resulting in a very heavy crop. But I liked it. Although the photo was completely different now, I did kind of like the balance between the building, the sky and the moon. So I went for it and started the rest of the edit. I was going for a warm summer evening look, so I shifted the white balance towards the warmer side and slightly into the magenta tone. Then my standard stuff you've seen enough of by now, except in the curves I added some red and magenta to the photo in the red channel. To give the sky a little gradient I added a good old gradient filter just with some darkness. And I used a brush to brighten up the edge of the building a little, I don't really know why, I just thought it was fitting. And lastly I added some grain. And that's it! Sorry for cropping the image this harshly Luca, but I hope you like the outcome, thanks for your submission. So let's finish off this video with the last edit. I got this photo here from Pablo Pictures, Patrick is his name. He sent me this picture of a house somewhere on a snowy mountain and oh, I love it, beautiful long exposure. Let's go! This photo I didn't crop. To embrace the cold of the snow I went a little blue with a white balance. I liked the colour contrast between the house lights and the rest of the image so I enhanced that a little bit in the calibration tab by pushing the blues into the teal. To recover some details I pulled down the highlights and the whites far down and I even brought down the exposure a little. At this point the blues were going a little overboard for my taste so I desaturated them. Now because I had pulled down the highlights so much the moon has now sadly become this ugly white dot. But that is easily fixed with the help of a round filter around the moon with dehaze and clarity pulled down and adding back the highlights to create this soft round gradient. Lastly I was pretty annoyed by the roof on the left edge of the photo so I imported it into Photoshop and did a terrible but acceptable job at erasing it. That wraps up the edit of this photo with the end result looking like this. Thank you Patrick for submitting. That's it everybody, I had a great time editing your photos so thank you again very much for participating in this format. I hope this was enjoyable for you and of course somewhat valuable to you. If so, leave a like and if you want to see more content like this feel free to subscribe and I'll hopefully see you again next week. Goodbye.